I often joke with people that I am the worst mortgage lender in the world. And why I say that is because I talk people out of buying houses a lot. I mean, a couple times a week at least, right? Which is very abnormal for someone who makes their living providing mortgages. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about one of the reasons I would tell someone they should rent instead of buying, okay? Oh, you can hear my dog barking in the background. That's nice, it's a feature, it's a feature. Muppet says hello to the mailman. Um, okay, so let's talk about that. Um, generally what I'm gonna suggest renting before buying is if you're looking at moving to an area you've never spent any time in. And the reason is, is that if you're unfamiliar with the area, finding the best neighborhood that fits your needs is very, very difficult, okay? And I've heard horror stories, like I had a guy call me six months ago, he's like, hey, I really need to get a mortgage, um, but my lender won't do it because I just bought a house three months ago. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I was gonna live in this house, but it's really scary, and so I've gotta buy another house to get out of that house. And I'm like, well, are you gonna sell that house? I can't. Uh, okay, why? I bought it three months ago, there's no equity in it, I can't sell it. Okay, so why are you selling this house? Why are you not living there? Why are you making this you know, very irrational decision. Well, so here's the story. So he came from Los Angeles in California and he was moving up to the Bay Area and he didn't have a lot of time to look at houses. So he relied on a local realtor. <sighs> that dog, man. And the local realtor told him, he's like, I need something that's very walkable. I want a safe neighborhood. This is what's important to me. He was actually disabled, so he couldn't drive. He really needed something walkable. And she's like, okay, you know, I found this perfect house for you. It's below market. It's such a great deal. Yeah, it's a super good deal because the street is littered with crack addicts and there's like shootings bi-weekly. Yeah, so she basically put him in one of the most dangerous areas of the Bay Area. And he had no idea because he's not from the Bay Area. He didn't spend any time in the Bay Area. He didn't research the area. He went off of pictures on Zillow and what the realtor said. Now this is important guys because there's a couple things happening right now because of COVID. There was an article that came out where Redfin said 45% of home purchases were made without visiting the property in person. <gasps> That's so scary. That's so scary. I mean, look, I get it, but I can tell you, you need to see the property in person. I was on the phone with a client, Gaylene. I love you, Gaylene. If you're watching this, you know you're my favorite. And we were laughing because her neighbor had put his house for sale and he was trying to get $400,000 for his house. His house is a modular home that's on a, a, an acre of land and he's planted some gardens, okay? And the front yard actually has like a burn pile. It's, you know, terrible. But the pictures make it look amazing. Now, what should that place actually be worth based on, you know, local estimates and everything else? 225, maybe, maybe, maybe 225. But the pictures make it look like a uh, farm retreat. And the way that the, it's worded, the realtor, I was saying to Gaylene, she should get an award. She should get like a Pulitzer Prize for her writing ability because it was amazing. She's like, um, you know, and basically it's a, it's a mobile home, guys, with chickens that run around the yard because the guy wants them to be free range. Now these chickens also go up into everyone else's yard. And the whole thing's like, oh, fresh eggs, you know, chef's garden, chef's garden, watch out for that one. Chef's garden is code for you are going to pay more <laughs> because we're saying a chef planted it. A chef didn't plant it, it just has oregano, uh, basil, parsley, you know, what would, a, what would you use when you cook, right? But if you say chef's garden, doesn't that sound nice? Woo! And it's like, join this farm to fork movement, like it, it was written amazingly. He's trying to get twice what it's worth. And between the pictures, the description, he's gonna get it. I bet you he's gonna get it. Some poor sucker from San Francisco. I'm sorry if you're in San Francisco watching this. I love you guys, you know it. But people are clawing at the walls in their apartment. Someone's gonna see it. They're gonna see the chickens. They're gonna think it's a farm lifestyle. 
they're gonna go, oh, it's under a million dollars because everything in San Francisco is over a million dollars. It's a bargain. And then they're gonna get there and they're gonna cry. And they're gonna cry for a week and a half. And beyond that, I love Gaylene, but Gaylene is a deer hunter and Gaylene drives her, drive, <laughs> she drives her meat outside. So if you're driving to your new beautiful mobile farm, you're gonna pass like in a month, I think it's two weeks, you're gonna pass the deer carcasses outside, right? It's gonna scare the bejesus out of whoever buys that property because it's written for certain clientele. So the whole point of that is that you gotta watch out guys. Like look, there's a lot of really good realtors who are honest, ethical, and um, will make sure that you don't get into a bad position, but there's a lot that don't care. Like you're a paycheck. Like let's be perfectly, perfectly clear. Realtors make their money when they sell a house. They do not make money by being good Samaritans. So you don't know what you're gonna get and you can't trust pictures on Zillow. You can't trust pictures on Redfin. You can't trust pictures, okay? All these pictures with filters. It's like um, Tinder, right? Tinder or Snapchat or any of this stuff. No one looks like themselves anymore. So why would houses, like you think that technology doesn't carry over? I've been in houses where you look at it online and you're like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. It has so much natural light. They used to filter. They used to filter and it's like a cave. It's a cave. So if you can't get out there to see it and you're 100% trusting a realtor to pick out a house for you, just rent. Just rent for a year, guys. You can go out there and rent. You won't be wasting your money. You might be saving a lot of money. A lot of money. Get to know the area, okay? So that's the first thing. If you don't know the area well, you wanna be very careful. You wanna make sure, like worst case, if you're like, Jen, I'm not gonna rent, I have to buy a house. Cool, can you go out there for a couple weeks and like rent an Airbnb and just like drive your car around, walk the street, the streets at night, just invest. And you're like, well, that could be $3,000. That's a lot of money, I agree. But at the same point, it's more expensive to make a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, five hundred million dollar mistake, right? My guy who ended up in the crack neighborhood, 900K. Mm -hmm. 900K and he can't get out. Okay, so another reason you might want to rent before you buy. So if you're in an area, once again, where you're moving to, my dad did this recently. So we had all these fires in Santa Rosa a couple of years ago and it was horrible. And my dad's house at the time was surrounded by redwood trees and the fire got within 600 feet of his house. We were hiding out in an Airbnb, like just, it was horrible. And it got to the point where every time, even though his house didn't burn down, considerable smoke damage, but every time it was windy, they couldn't sleep. And I understand that, you know, I live in a part of Sonoma County that also, we were evacuated last year for a month um, because of the fires, well, two weeks and then they didn't have gas, whatever. And every time it's windy, I get nervous too. So I understand that. So he decided, you know what? I'm at an, a point in my life where I don't have to work from an office. I've always dreamed of living in Santa Fe. I'm gonna move to Santa Fe. And my conversation with my dad, and he totally disregarded my opinion. And it did work, he disregarded, yeah, he did. Um, and it did work out in his benefit. But Santa Fe is an area that doesn't appreciate a lot. If you look at the sales, and there's different parts of the country where it doesn't appreciate a lot. And what that means is like, okay, there's certain parts of the country where you can see like in 2015, the house was worth 200, in 2020, it's worth 300. Oh my God, that's amazing. And the market's still going up. That's an appreciating market. So what that means is if you buy into that market and you hate it, you probably can get out. You know, it might take a couple of years, but you can probably get out. If you're in a market where it was 200,000 in 2015, and it's 205,000 in 2020, that is not an appreciating market. So it's much more difficult to get out of that market. So if you're moving to somewhere you don't really know, and if you look at the values, they haven't really increased in the last five or 10 years that much, you really need to be thoughtful about, hey, look, like if I hate it here and I need to sell, like I'm gonna, the odds are I'm gonna lose money. Okay, now that's another reason. And I, I begged him, I'm like, dad, can you please rent? Dad, can you please rent? Dad, can you please rent? And he wouldn't, but in fairness to him, he'd been to Santa Fe probably 120 times in the last few years. He's um, a pilot, not professionally, but he's always been very passionate about aviation. And so he would fly there. 
uh, to go on weekend trips, like it was his thing. So he knew the area well enough to make an educated decision. However, I'm gonna give you guys another example. I am so excited because I have always wanted a house in Monterey, always. I love Monterey County in California. I think it's so beautiful. Um, I love the beaches there. You know, I love the fogginess. It's very, um, I don't know, I think it's romantic. It's romantic. My husband's throwing up listening to this. He's like, what, her, romantic? Ah, oh, all she does is work. Um, anyways, I think it's a beautiful place. And we've always talked about that that's probably where we're gonna retire. Well, with COVID, he's working from home, I'm working from home. I'm like, let's try it. And it's a market where it's not cheap to get in and it doesn't appreciate a lot. So we're gonna rent. We're gonna rent for a year, try it out part time. You know, we're not gonna sell our house because we still love our house, but we're gonna rent and try it out. And the reason we're gonna do that is because if you look at the market in the area we're looking, sometimes houses are on the market for two to three years. So that tells me that if I buy in that market, I better love it because I may have it forever. So you really wanna be mindful of appreciation and your ability to get out. Okay, third reason that you might rent instead of buying. Cash flow, yes, okay. So whenever you're looking at buying a house in an area that you're not super familiar with, you always want an exit plan. Exit plan one is appreciation. If the market's appreciating, you know you can get out. Exit plan two, if you're in an area with no appreciation, what are the local rents? Now, if you buy a house for $200,000 and the rent is four grand, okay, cool. If you end up hating that house, great. You're going to have a tenant pay your mortgage and you're going to make money off of it. You're on your way to being, you know, a property mobile. So that's great. That's your second exit plan. Now, if you look at the local rents and the local rents do not cover the mortgage, and that's another, you know, reason why I'm going to try renting in this area first is because the rent does not cover the mortgages. Um, you're trapped again, right? So if there's no appreciation and there's no cash flow, if you don't like it, you are SOL. Your SOL. And I know, okay, guys, you might want a snack break now. I promise snack breaks and naps. <laughs> you might want a snack break. Okay. Um, so the bottom line is, is that, look, everyone's always like, well, I want to buy. I need to buy now. Okay. You need to have enough information to make an educated decision. These are large sums of money at every level. What's, whether it's a $100,000 house, a $50,000 house, a $4 million house, these are large sums of money. It's not 20 bucks at the grocery store. It's not a haagen flavor that might be bad. This is something that can really affect your financial well-being for a long time. So you need to make educated decisions. Now, if you're sitting there going, but I don't wanna waste money on rent. Well, guys, paying the rent might make it so you don't make $100,000, $900,000 a mistake because you can rent a house and be like, oh my God, I hate this. Like this could happen to me. So I could go to Monterey. I'm so excited. So like if you guys are calling me this week, you're not going to get me. I'm really sorry because I'm going to be packing, doing a little filming and moving. And I'm like, yeah, I'm really stoked. Anyways, but, um, and I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Okay, but you wanna make sure you know what you're getting into. So sometimes renting's a much better thing. So what I was saying is that in my instance, I could get there and I could be like, oh my God, it is always foggy, this is horrible. And had I bought instead of rented, I would be stuck with a very expensive foggy problem. So keep these things in mind when you guys are thinking about buying in an area that you're not familiar with. The other thing is, is often I get retirees who are like, okay, Jen, I need you to qualify me. Since I'm licensed in 44 states now, they're like, I need you to qualify me for Connecticut, Texas, Florida, and Iowa. <laughs> and I'm like, cool, walk me through this. And they're like, well, you know, I just wanna make sure I find somewhere affordable. Have you ever been to any of these places? No. Well, like, how are you gonna make a good decision? Like, you've never been to any of these states and you want me to qualify you to buy a house and you have like zero information on climate, everything else. And it's like, well, I can Google that. No, guys, no. So when someone comes to me and they say they wanna be qualified for like 15 states, I'm always like, look, I can qualify you and let you know what you qualify for. However, every single state, like just so you know, counties have different property taxes. So it is tough to do a 15 state without knowing the county qualifies. So I just do Texas taxes, that scares everyone. Um, but it's ridiculous. It's not a good financial decision. 
you guys, so what I always advise is Airbnb. Mm -hmm. Airbnb. So if you're retired and you don't know what state you want to live in and you want a lower cost living, and we hear that a lot in California because it's so expensive to live here, then guess what? You're retired. Go spend a month in Florida. Go spend two weeks in Iowa. Go spend, you know, uh, two weeks in New York. Go Airbnb and make sure that you like where you're going to live. Okay. I can't stress that enough because I do get the calls too, where they're like, Oh, Hey Jen. Yeah. That house we bought, we hate it. We want to come home. Can you please help us finance our way back home? And if there's no appreciation and there's no cash flow, financing your way home can be very, very difficult. So I hope this has been helpful. I know it's been a little bit lengthy. Um, I will update you on my renting adventure, right? I'm the mortgage lender who rents a house now because they're too chicken to buy it because of lack of appreciation and knowing that it won't cash flow. Um, but it's a good thing because I'm going to spend a little bit of money, right? But it may save me a ton. So questions, comments, feel free to reach out. If you liked this video, please click the like button. If you hate it, click the hate button. But either way, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.